Good morning. It's good to see everybody today. Um, so I am going to be talking about a new disease that's been detected in southern Ontario, beech leaf disease. Right, so beech is uh, an important tree species throughout eastern North America. It is shade tolerant. Um, it's a late successional species. It has a lot of ecological value. It's an important food source for wildlife, a lot of protein content and uh, fat content in the seeds. Um, its market value is much lower. Um, it is used for flooring, pallets, and firewood. Okay. This is a resource that is already at risk in Ontario because of beech bark disease. Um, the, the scale um, and that causes beech bark disease is present throughout southern Ontario. Um, some locations have developed the, the full beech bark disease infection with the fungus, um, whereas other locations there's still just the scale infestation. Um, the beech thickets that develop after the killing front have been a formidable challenge for managers. Um, and beech snap has been a problem uh, because it puts people and their property at risk. Um, there has there's been a, a little glimmer of hope that uh, some beech do appear to be resistant to the scale. Um, so there's been effort to, to find those trees. And as Simeon mentioned, there are breeding programs. Okay. <clears throat> so. Uh, I guess I get to be the doom and gloom person <laughs> for the day. Um, so I get to, to tell you about a, a new disease that we're detecting on beach in southern Ontario. It was actually first detected in Lake County, Ohio, which is the dark blue color on the map. Um, it was That was in 2012. It was also a drought year. They at first weren't sure if this was a new disease or if these were just drought symptoms. Uh, after the next following year, it became more apparent that this was actually a new disease. As you can see, it was then detected in Pennsylvania in 2016 and 2017 in New York. And then our own forest health monitoring technicians detected it in southern Ontario in Elgin County in 2017 as well. Uh, now we are up to a five-county area. Okay. Um, and I want to look a little closer at these detections. Um, although it is a five-county area, you can see from the red dots that it's, um, it's still in a fairly confined area that we're finding these detections in. Um, and we have, there are some locations where we've looked for beech leaf disease and we've not detected it. Although I would always caution to say that when things are at a low level of infestation, it's hard to detect it. So. You'll see what happens with those sites. All right, so I'm going to tell you about the symptoms first, and then I'm going to go through a whole bunch of photos. So you'll all be experts by the time this presentation is over. All right, so the, the most important symptom, the most distinct one, is this banding on the leaves. And the banding is restricted within the veins of the leaf, so it looks like stripes going across the leaf. Um, in the, the springtime, they're just darkened areas. As the summer progresses, the tissue thickens, and it gets more chaotic looking, more yellowish color. The leaves start to curl, a twisted appearance, um, get some leaf loss. Um, powdery mildew can develop on those leaf bands as well. Um, and then the other thing that's been noticeable uh, is leaf bud abortion that is occurring. Right, so lots of photos now. So these are from the Cleveland Metro Parks in Ohio. Um, one, the, the one on the left has the, the bands on the leaves. They're kind of dark and swollen. The leaf is really curvy. And when you look through the light, you can see the, the bands quite easily on those leaves. And note, note how where the veins, like those bands are restricted within the veins. And that's a really important diagnostic characteristic associated with nematode infestations. Right, so in the springtime, uh, Rebecca Lister has been going out 
every month and collecting leaves for, leaves for us, and she's taking a lot of photos. So in the springtime on the left is a normal leaf, and then in the, the center and on the right side we have symptomatic leaves, and you can see the banding already on those leaves when they emerge. So the damage is, is already occurring, we think, when these leaves are in the buds. Right. Then by midsummer, you start to see that yellow ring color. You can tell that that tissue is starting to get toughened, um, thickened, uh, and a little bit of wrinkling. Here's some of the curling that we've been talking about, the distortion of the leaves. And the, you can note that the unhealthy tree is missing leaves as well as has infestation. On the left side is your healthy branch, what it should like, and on the right is a tree with disease. Um, during the, uh, the summer, there were some leaves that reflushed, so we had some new leaves develop on these trees, and then we started to see that there were, they became affected later in the season as well. The leaf banding is visible on the leaves even in the winter time, so it is possible to pick up leaves off the ground or the leaves that are still hanging on the tree and see some of the damage from beech leaf disease. This is our, the next few photos are from Ohio where the infestation was found in 2012. So it, um, we know it's been there for quite a bit longer and the infestations are more severe. So this is, um, it appears um, observationally that the symptoms develop or more se seem more severe down towards the ground. But over time, this definitely moves up into the canopy. Okay. And uh, that's quite unusual, uh, especially for something that could be, uh, for a nematode disease. And um, you can see that the, the effects of what this could do to the crowns of trees. So we do see this in the overstory of the trees here in Ontario. And there's some more photos. Um, when I, I went, um, I have family in Ohio, so I went there and I, I stopped by a site. Um, and what I was seeing that were beech tree saplings that only had a few leaves on the outside edges and at the very top of the tree that were left. So um, more like that picture on the right. Um, so in the U.S. they are reporting that they're seeing mortality from beech leaf disease, mostly in the saplings. Okay. Uh, one thing that our lab has been finding over uh, the past year and a half that we've been receiving samples is that there are a number of things that can look like beech leaf disease. Uh, first off, um, a rhenium patch from the area fin mites. Um, there's many types, so it can look different from uh, leaf to leaf. And uh, you can see the, the striping, how similar that could look, um, especially early in the year. But uh, one of the differences is the arinia on the bottom side of the leaf. If you look under a microscope, you can see that. And uh, again, this is, again, the uranium patch, but this time it has, uh, if you just flip over the leaf, there's a dark brown coloration, which I like this one because I can really quickly say that's not beech leaf disease because of that brown color. Um, and those patches can have an orange cast or a red cast as well. Right, the other look-alike that we've found in the lab is powdery mildew. Uh, the, the difference here is that powdery mildew tends to occur in more of a circular patch that will cross over the leaf veins. So that, that's how uh, one easy way to distinguish between those. And then we've also seen anthracnose on the beech leaves, um, the dark brown um, patches on the leaf. Um, this particular leaf in this photo has both beech leaf disease and anthracnose, which brings uh, to the conclusion that uh, in order to confirm beech leaf disease, you really need to send a sample in 
uh, and have it diagnosed because we see a lot of different systems on leaves that don't have beech leaf disease, and then we're also seeing a lot of different diseases on the leaves that have beech leaf disease. So it makes it quite confusing uh, sometimes to uh, figure out what, what's actually there. All right. So um, since 2012, there's been a number of people trying to figure out what is the causal agent of beech leaf disease. Uh, they've looked for fungi, bacteria, viruses, phytoplasmas. They've used traditional techniques. They've used molecular techniques. Uh, this one was a real challenge. Uh, finally, Dave McCann from Ohio Department of Agriculture was looking at the microscope and happened to see something squiggling and realized there were nematodes on these beech leaf samples that had been sent to him. Uh, this um, then resulted in looking at the genetic sequence or DNA sequence, um, and they determined that this was a new species of nematode. Well, it turned out that in Japan, they were doing the exact same research. <laughs> so um, the Japanese researchers have the honor of naming this new species. Uh, now the, the questions are, um, is this a, the American population, subpopulation, the species, um, or is it um, you know, possibly a new species as well? Uh, so uh, now we have a, an international working group that is trying to solve a lot of questions about this nematode uh, and looking to see how closely associated it is with beech leaf disease. All right, and this is a photograph from the publication from the Japanese group. Um, and you can see the really distinctive banding on those leaves. It's on a different species of beech. Uh, so, quite interesting. All right, so as soon as we learned about the nematode, uh, we asked for Rebecca to send in samples to us to our Ontario lab, and we found the nematode really quickly. Um, and then very thankfully, Dr. Yu from Agriculture of Canada was willing to accept our sample, and he confirmed that, yes, um, this was the Lytolinkus species. Uh, and Dr. Yu has been continuing to work with us. Um, we uh, have been tra tracking the populations of the nematode over time since June, looking at the, the same tree and looking at symptomatic, symptomatic leaves and then some of the asymptomatic leaves that are on the diseased trees. Um, and we've also been looking to make sure that we don't see the nematode at sites that don't have the symptoms. So we have not found the nematode at any of the sites that do not have beech leaf disease. We do find the nematode on symptomatic leaves at beech leaf disease sites. Um, we're also working with Dr. Yu uh, to rear the nematodes and to learn how to inoculate the trees with it so that way we can look at this in the lab as well. It'll be a lot easier to study. Um, so, so far the, the data that we've been able to generate, the data that's coming from the states supports that this nematode is a agent of beech. All right, so uh, Richard Wilson, Dr. Yu and I are part of an international working group. One, part, one section of this uh, is to establish a monitoring protocol that can be used uh, in the states, in here in Ontario, to look at the severity of the disease, uh, look at the progression over time, uh, to find out what it's doing to the seedlings, what's happening with saplings, what's happening with mature trees. Uh, we also uh, are, have questions about are there resistant trees and, uh, you know, are these resistant trees the same ones that are resistant to beech bark disease <laughs> uh, to the scale? That would be wonderful. Uh, so, and we, and we did trial that this fall already, this, this Mike Francis, actually. <laughs> um, some other questions that we have, um, how is this nematode spreading? Um, so we're, we're looking at different trapping methods 
uh, to get an idea of uh, if this is, there are questions, you know, maybe it's insect dispersed, maybe this is wind dispersed. Uh, so we want to um, better understand that. Um, we want to understand the disease cycle so that way we have an opportunity to develop some management. And also we want to make sure that this nematode is not capable of affecting any of other tree species <coughs> in Ontario. Great. So, and a thank you to quite a few people, um, a number of people in BAMS, uh, Rebecca, uh, Cheryl, Mike, um, David at the Invasive Species Center for uh, doing the insect diagnostics, the mites, and uh, then also Dr. Yu from Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. Uh, we definitely would not have been able to do this research without him. And uh, Sylvia has been doing our disease diagnostics. Uh, so we are very thankful 